Everybody, we're back at Sims Complete. I'm here with Phil Sims, former Super Bowl MVP of the New York Giants, one of the greatest quarterback evaluators this side of, <laughs> well, actually, yeah, he, he's all right, though. But hey, Big Phil, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing well, Big Matt. Uh, I got to get a nickname for you. All the nicknames I have for you, we can't say uh, publicly. <laughs> but um, I, I raised you, so I got to live with what I – some of the things I taught you, not all the things that you do I taught you, that's for sure. <laughs> but it's fun doing this. Hey, we we did J.J. McCarthy. Now we're going to do Drake May of the University of North Carolina. Uh, really uh, interested yeah. to hear your opinions on him. We haven't shared notes much in doing this process which we won't. I'm hoping we have some really good disagreements. Um, you know. Yeah, I like that lately, though, because, because you're, hey, it, you know, we're, I'll see you at the house or whatever, at family functions, and you'll just be like, hey, wh what do you think about this? And I'm like, nope, can't tell you. Yep. Won't, won't say yep. it. I wait, I wait till we go live, baby, to share my opinions with you now. So we can't waste okay. the good stuff. <laughs> well, let's go. What, what do we got about Drake May? What's our, our your first thoughts or real quick about him? Yeah, so Drake May, I mean, really just this is a guy that I think everyone has already labeled as uh, 1A, 1B there with Caleb Williams. Some guys have okay. had him one. Some have had him in that, that close second, right? It depends, right? But it's basically been him and Caleb Williams as the top two quarterbacks, I feel like, for this entire year going into this this draft prospect uh, process. Excuse me. And, uh, you know, when I watch Drake, you know, there, there's a, a lot of things that jump out to me uh, about his game and his ability, and there's a lot to be excited about, too. Um, you know, I think it is uh, a player that has really good experience in a very short period of time, right? And let, yeah. let's kind of talk about that real quick, right? Well, as far as a, a yeah. quarterback goes, right, Drake has – not missed out on the opportunity to drop back and throw the football at North Carolina. You know, I mean, this dude has gotten uh, a ton of throws. I want to say close to a thousand throws in the past two years uh, yes. as the starting quarterback there. So let me see. He had 500 attempts this year uh, or 500 attempts last year, 400 attempts this year. What are your thoughts on just, you know, his experience and, and his throws that he got? Well, it's the opposite of J.J. McCarthy at Michigan. He's got, he got <laughs> like you said, three to four years of throws in two years. And it was all about the quarterback at North Carolina, which is great. That helps make the transition to the NFL easier for him, which we say all the time. Uh, I was excited to watch him. Um, as I watched him, I, I have to say this, somewhat a little disappointed because my expectations were really high. Because okay. that's all I heard. Will it be Caleb Williams or Drake May and Jade? And I just go, well, so, but there is a lot of good. He's definitely a high pick in the draft. Um, and uh, he has skill and traits that we love at NFL quarterbacks. I think the first one is size. You know, he's he is a big dude. 6'3", 240, what they have. And he looks every bit of that when I watch him on the films. Yeah, and, and just, you, you know, to kind of go back to what you said there, what were, I guess, some of the things that you just, that, you know, you were hearing leading up into this evaluation process that you feel like didn't fulfill what, what you were being told? Well, let me start with this. Mobility, his mobility is good, you know. Right. But I think my expectations were even more because okay. I kept hearing, oh, it's Josh Allen. No, it's not Josh Allen. Right. He's not Josh Allen in any category. Uh, as far as size, strength, arm, mobile, I know, you know, but that's comparing him to one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL without even nobody can even argue that point. But the mobility was good. His size does come in, um, uh, comes into periods where it really helps him because he can break arm tackles. And he'll do that in the NFL, too, because he's big, has pretty good speed. I'm really interested to watch him at the combine running, throwing just what it looks to me you know, doing that. And, and, and of course I use that too, part of the evaluation, which a lot of people hate, but I do it, but what else His accuracy? It's good, but it's not great. Uh, it's not really good. It was just good. Uh, right. so strong arm, no doubt about it. And I saw throws where I'd go, wow, that is top of the line of NFL stuff. And then I saw a lot of throws where I went, wow, how did you miss that? Uh, the football didn't have the right speed on it, uh, things like that. His accuracy wasn't quite what I was expecting either. So Now, do you think a little bit of that is, uh, is it his technique and his throwing motion, or is it more so just he is a product of, 
you know, the environment at UNC where it's like, hey, we know we're going to get 30 to 50 throws in every game. And we're just going to kind of cut it loose and play play kind of fast and free that way. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, a little bit. I, I mean, I think that they throw it so much that there is a lot of – it's like I always say Dan Marino threw it 30, 40 times a game back when a lot of people weren't, and he'd miss one. Big deal. I got more coming. So he can get right. in rhythm or whatever. But I, I'll just say this about Drake May. When he does, his motion is good. Uh, it's going to get better in the NFL. But when he catches the football, when it really comes out right or out of his hand, his arms a little more compact, it, it's it's big time. I mean, yeah. he makes some throws. You just go, wow, that is, t-, like I said, that's big time NFL quarterback throw. I just don't see enough of them. And I see too many throws that just uh, not accurate and, uh, you know, a little bit of concern when I, when I say these things. Yeah, I agree. And, and you kind of said something there, too, that I want to look into a little bit more with you. You know, when I watched his tape, you know, I see a lot of throws where there's no doubt, there's no question his arm speed and his arm talent is there, right? There's no doubt about that. But sometimes, I mean, the dude just rare back so damn far. It's hard for him to catch it. It's hard for him to to be pinpoint accurate because, I mean, I even look at some of the pictures too, right, as we evaluate these quarterbacks. We go and we look at some of the pictures to kind of see their arm angle and where those positions are. There are multiple throws where you can see his arm is almost at full extension behind his body right? He doesn't keep that, that 90 degree arm angle, you know, that we valued with CJ Stroud so much a year ago. And and that's really, to me, a little alarming. and something that I think, you know, for him to have tremendous success at the NFL level, that is something I think he needs to kind of learn to just tighten up, right? He has to condense his motion just a little bit. It's going to help him get the football out quicker. It'll also help with his accuracy too. We see Josh Allen do it. We saw CJ Stroud, not have to adapt at all. Just started the year having a compact motion was absolute machine. Whoa. And my chair just broke on me. All there right. So, uh, but that is definitely something that I think really uh, was noticeable to me is that some throws he missed, like you said, his arm just gets away from his body way too aggressively for him to be successful consistently. Yeah. And we see guys change uh, a lot yeah. in the NFL. I do every year, you know, I watch quarterbacks and I say, if you're not a better thrower in year two than you were in year one, then you didn't work hard enough at it or you just don't have it. <laughs> right. And a great example, which I saw a little progress every year, maybe not as fast as we would like because the fact that he wasn't starting Jordan love and green Bay, it just year one to year two to year three, all of a sudden, even this year, that he had a really terrific year, but it started slow. And I'm like, oh boy, but man, when he kind of caught it and caught fire, really got comfortable throwing the football, he changed physically. And of course his um, production on the field was great. So yeah, he's, he's always going to be a great example for us as far as how we look at the quarterback position and obviously what's being asked of them through this process. Uh, And really the difference between day one starter and being able to sit and learn and improve at the position. Now, Drake may, unfortunately, will probably not be in a position uh, to sit and learn. He'll be a guy that will be most likely thrown into the fire really quickly in his football career. Now, as far as his decision making goes, you know, what were your thoughts on that uh, within the UNC offense? Uh, Yeah, I thought his his decision making was pretty good. Uh, I didn't look at it and go, wow, great, but it was good. And, um, you know, so th- that caught me. I think just the his arm strength, like we talked about, is he's tough. Oh, my gosh, did he take some hits? Did he throw really well? It's really kind of funny. Under pressure, he threw the ball some terrific throws down the field, short, got rid of the football. He's pretty good at behind the line of scrimmage, uh, too. You know what I mean by that? The screens, we talk about it. I talk yeah. about it uh, all the time because it's such a big part of NFL offenses now. And, of course, in college, uh, North Carolina wasn't shy about throwing screens. I mean, they, they threw a bunch of them every single game. But so uh, what was your question to me, though? I no, that, that's a good point. I want to kind of go into that a little bit more. I mean, I think he does show the versatility to throw with tremendous power right yes. down the field. 
right? I mean, like bombs down the field, but also, you know, vertical passes where he is trying to drive it into tight windows. He does those things extremely well. I think he also shows on tape too that he can throw the ball with touch and with a little anticipation as well, which I think is really impressive. Right. And then he has that ability to be a great hand thrower, like you're mentioning, on those screens, those short passes behind the line of scrimmage, and his arm flexibility, although occasionally is sometimes his greatest weakness, is also his greatest strength in creating completions for a lot of these other throws behind the line of scrimmage and when people are around him. And that's that was definitely one of the notes that I had here too, is that dude throws it extremely well when people are around him and when bodies are kind of are hitting him as he throws. So that kind of just shows you his strength uh, uh, overall, his overall body strength, his arm strength, and his flexibility too to get those things done. I liked it too. You know, I wrote it down. I just, I saw enough of him. When he throws the ball deep down the field, I just yeah. wrote, oh my God, he can throw it sky high and he can throw it a long way. Right. And when he did those things, not only did the, the football, he was on target, but, you know, it was just, I, I liked how it went up and came down. It made it easier for the receivers. He was on target. But those were some of his best throws, Matt. Yeah. You know, because when you load up the throw it up in the air, you got to get, you know, the weight in the right position to really throw it high and long. He did that. And the spin of the ball was great. So the upside is, I think, really good. Right. I think the one thing that uh, I'll complain about again, just a little bit, his arm does get long. That does lead to inaccuracy. I would know that better than anybody because, man, mine got long all the time. And I was like, damn, this <laughs> wasn't good. But whatever. <laughs> but um, the toughness in the pocket, the decision-making, his size, his arm strength, and looking ahead where it's going to go, as we talked about, yeah. I think those are all major pluses for Drake and May. The athleticism too, right? His ability. I think one thing you could see, you know, there's a tremendous upside for him to be an even better thrower on the run at the NFL level. There's yep. multiple throws on film there where he is uh, running in opposite directions, dropping his arm angle, creating funny angles, right, to throw the football, and he's extremely accurate. And I think even at the NFL level, he'll improve in that regard as being a great playmaker outside of the initial play design, right? Right. Um, his athleticism and all that is great. There have been some question marks a little bit about just like, is he a little careless with the football? Is that something that jumped off, uh, you know, the film for you when you were watching his tape? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Yes. I mean, he, he was, um, he's not afraid. Let's put it that way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I like yeah. That. So, it, the, the, Hey, I like them when they're aggressive. So I'm not going to, I wouldn't downgrade him on that. We can, we can help him, you know, make those decisions. Right. But the right. other stuff, you know, the one thing I thought he did well, I didn't see enough of it, pump fakes. Like when he yeah. saw the defense and he knew pre-stamp what it was, he would give a little pump fake one way, then turn and throw to the other. I thought that was really good. And the other thing I wrote down too, in the pocket, he does it all. He steps up, he will break the pocket. But also I saw him many times, which I love quarterbacks that do this now. He would feel the pocket and he would go back. Yeah. You know, he didn't break out to the side. He would go backwards, which buys time, stops the rush a little bit. I, th I thought that was really impressive by him, too. Uh, I agree. I agree. As far as just an evaluation standpoint, there's a lot to like about this football player. Right. You know, there absolutely is. Uh, I think he's he's got tremendous experience as far as dropping back and throwing it. You know, the only difference is, is that the UNC offense, you know, it's – it's not an NFL offense. It's not demanding that way, you know, where you have to be surgical and, and very aware of situational football. You know, there's not many offenses really for any of these college quarterbacks that are leaving right now that have that ability. So I think for him, one of the biggest adjustments really will be just to learn how to play situational football, you know, and know. Uh, pick and choose those battles of when to cut a loose, when to when to be courageous with the throws, like you're saying, right? And, and really when to say, all right, hey, let me throw this football away. Let me make the right decision now to to win the long game, you know. And that's something that I think Patrick Mahomes and his young career has shown, right? Right. He has all those great intangibles, but you know, for a guy as talented as he is, he doesn't put the football in harm's way a lot. And he was someone that threw. You know, he threw some careless throws in college in the evaluation yeah. process. Yeah. So that's where I feel like Drake, he has that ability to, you know, to have a, a a ceiling like that with his athleticism and a physical nature of the game. 
and then hopefully he can kind of tap into learning how to play the position of quarterback, uh, you know, a, a little bit faster than really what's being asked of him at his career at UNC. I'll say this. My last thing, when I watched him, there were a couple games where I don't know what it was. Was he relaxed? But he was really smooth, and, you know, you could tell he was just – it was no rush, no being frenetic and get rid of the football quick and threw yeah. the ball really well. And I mean, really well. And like one of the, and we did this earlier with JJ McCarthy, right. but when he played Minnesota, who, who actually had a lot of good players or solid players, I thought in the secondary, he, that game, he looked more relaxed to me. I've watched maybe four or five games, but he looked more relaxed and in rhythm and really the accuracy, the touch, everything was there for him. It was like, man, I don't know. Maybe he went out and ran a few miles before he went out there to throw the football because that'll <laughs> relax you. And you know that's a part of it, you know. Uh, so it was really good. And the upside is it's all there for him to be a big-time starting NFL quarterback. Yeah, without a doubt. So that's all we got today for Drake May. Uh, really interesting, you know, evaluation. Curious to see kind of where he falls, you know, for other evaluators with the rest of the quarterbacks. But to me, he's he's definitely up there on the top of the list for sure. Um, and, and we'll dive into more of these quarterbacks for the NFL draft here coming soon. That's all for us at Sims Complete with my host, Phil Sims. I'm your other host because he doesn't want to be named or labeled no, as all good. Uh, Sims complete. That's all we got more QBs though, coming soon. So stay tuned. Thank you everybody.